A new HiDream model for instruction-based image editing has been released called HiDream E1. It's a bit like the image editing thing for ChatGPT if you've seen that, only you can run it at home on your own computer. Being something you can run locally, it obviously isn't quite as powerful, but you can see at a glance here the range of things it can do. Change parts of the image, the whole style, replace text, or even remove objects, all via simple text instructions. There are a number of ways to try it, such as via their Gradio interface, which is also available on Hugging Face Spaces if you don't have a powerful enough GPU at home. Very useful, as even with the GGUF files, you're still going to need a good 16 gig of VRAM. Today, however, I'll be using Comfy UI. If you haven't used Comfy or Hydream before, then do check out my previous videos for instructions on how to do that, with the links being in the video description. To start with, grab the free Comfy UI High Dream Workflow example by either downloading the image there, then loading it into Comfy UI by using the open option from the workflow menu, or by just dragging it directly into Comfy. If you've used High Dream before, then you'll have most of the files already. Either way, you should be prompted to download anything which is missing. The only file that's different here is the new High Dream E1 model. Let's take a quick look at what's going on here. The new HiDream E1 full model is being used in the Load Diffusion Model node, with the other files down here being the same as in my previous HiDream videos. As you'll also remember from my previous videos, the full model is a bit slower, as it's also using the negative conditioning as well, thanks to the CFG being above one. The positive prompt in this case is fairly long. Let the woman put on the VR glasses full of a sense of technology and all that other stuff it says on the screen there. One key change with this version is the limited resolution. I have had some success with 768 by 1152 but for the most part you're going to want to have a square 768 by 768 image. Yeah, bit of a bummer that still. Who knows what the future holds. The custom sampler uses Instruct pix to pix conditioning and a dual CFG guider, giving you a chunky three sets of conditioning to deal with. With everything at the default, I was running 28 steps at around 4.3 iterations per second, giving a total generation time of around two minutes using a hefty 22 gig of VRAM on my 3090. As with the previous HiDream models, there are GGUFs available too, and some of these fit nicely into 16 gig of VRAM. If you're a Microsoft Windows user with an Nvidia card, I'd guess you can probably run it in slow mode too with less VRAM, but give it a go and see what happens. The final image looks pretty decent given the prompt, but more on those in a moment. If you're thinking two minutes is a long time for a square image, then I definitely agree with you. So let's see if we can do a few things to speed that up. This time down in the basic scheduler, I've set the number of steps to 20. And if we have a look at the result, yeah, that's, that's still pretty decent. So that's knocked off a full 30 seconds here, making generation time just one and a half minutes. Staying tweak-free for the moment though, it's time to look at some more prompting. I've changed the input image this time but kept the prompt the same. So I've got a house going in and for the VR glasses, um, oh yeah, it hasn't really changed at all, has it? So that shows the importance of having a prompt which sort of matches what you want from the image. A new prompt this time taking inspiration from their examples and I want to change it to an anime style cartoon. And the end result is pretty decent. Um, it is missing his glasses though and he's got a bit of a chibi head. But it does show you can style an image with a simple prompt even if a couple of things get missed. Changing the prompt this time to, well, include the glasses and hopefully change the shape of his head a little bit. Do you think it's done it? Well sort of his head is still pretty much the same shape and his eyes are green rather than the glasses but you know it's close. You can use all sorts of input images and this time I've got an anime cartoon style input image along with a prompt give him a moustache. I'd say it's matched the style nicely here and given him a rather spiffing moustache. With the free example workflow working nicely, it's time to take a deeper dive into what's going on and see if we can speed things up a bit. Spoiler alert, the answer is yes. 
Compared to the original two minutes, it is indeed possible to drop that to just 25% of the original time. It's comparison time. This super massive and complex looking workflow is actually really rather simple, as all I'm doing is testing various different ways of doing much the same thing. Doing this lets you see how the various results compare, with the main aim being to speed things up without sacrificing too much quality. I've gone all out on colours and individual groups because that's how I like it, the prompt in this case being give her a very hairy moustache and pink sunglasses, along with this sort of illustrated style image. In the green box we've got contender number one, which is what we've just seen the free example workflow. To give it the very best chance at competing in this test of speed, it's using just 20 steps for its triple conditioning set. At around 4.2 iterations a second, this work of art took 1 minute and 25 seconds. Very impressive. Now let's take a look at the newcomer. This meagre specimen uses the default K sampler with an astonishingly low CFG of just 2.5. This combined with the UniPC sampler and the KL optimal scheduler means this double conditioning wonder can do eight steps in under 30 seconds. Even going to the full 20 steps knocks a huge 30 seconds off the free example workflow's default settings. This particular image was done in 12 steps, so 36 seconds compared to 1 minute and 25. But wait, there's more. If I shift over here a bit, this is where I slapped in a bunch of these awesome RG3 image compare nodes. And well, you can kind of see one big difference already. Down here, it's this one, isn't it? The free example workflow output is way brighter than any of the other images. If I zoom in on the image compare node and move this across, you can see that's already starting to get brighter, brighter and brighter, and even the top has changed colour, so that's quite a big change, isn't it? For the standard K sampler version, uh, the opposite is actually the case, but it is a little bit more subtle. As I bring the bar across, it's just getting ever so slightly darker. If you do want to colour match things, then KJ Nodes provides once again with this awesome colour match node. Now this time, let's zoom in a little bit here, when I drag it across, you'll see the colour barely changes at all, and the sunglasses and the moustache all sort of fit in more nicely with the rest of the image. Using a lower CFG does seem to therefore help with those brightness issues, as you can see in this example. Now, this is the standard default free example workflow once again, but with the CFG there turned all the way down to 2.5. This time, when we compare the images, bring it across, as you can see, the colour difference is much less heavily pronounced. Well, hold on, I can hear you saying, why not just do 12 steps on the free example workflow? Good question, let's take a look. Oh, that, that's why the colours are even worse. So this time I've got the CFG there, all the way down to 2.5, 12 steps. But yes, those colours are just way off. Okay, so what's the best way to get decent results faster? Well, if you're up for learning how to edit the free example workflow to get a massive speed boost compared to the defaults, then pay close attention here. First up, we're going to remove all of these nodes in here, apart from the VAE, the little reroute node there, and the instruct pix to pix conditioning. Now, just slap in a regular K sampler, positive to positive, negative to negative, connect in the model, and the latent output to the VAE decode. Just a few settings to check now. Between 8 and 20 steps with a CFG of 2.5 using the UniPC sampler is generally OK. Various different schedulers and samplers do work, but SGM Uniform and KL Optimal are often good. Now, rather than 2 minutes, this takes about 30 seconds to produce a different but nevertheless decent result. If I go back to the very first image we started with and the original prompt, there you can see the original image and now it's given her the VR goggles. Pretty good. Now there is one other 
very important thing that I changed here, and that's the upscale method. This one is using bicubic. OK, why is that important? What happens if I use the default method of bilinear? Well, look at the trees. Definitely proof of something. In this case, it's that you may need to change the upscaling method depending on the original size and type of your input image. Sweet, at least now we've got a chunking great speed boost. We can do even more testing. As we've seen, realistic to cartoon, it's time to turn the tables and turn the cartoon into something more realistic. And in just 12 steps, it does exactly that. It is worth noting, however, that you wouldn't want to use the color matching node in cases like this, because look, oh dear, it's far too bright. Sometimes you may need more steps than others, like in this example here. I'm changing the style to that of a painting, oil on canvas. I've got my little rodent input. And for that particular style, I found going up to 18 steps was definitely the best and still under a minute. Removal of objects also seems to work quite well. So here I've got erase the lamppost on the left with the same image as last time. And the result is, yes, it's definitely got rid of that lamppost. Very nice. So it's like sort of in painting, but without having to draw a mask or anything, it, it just does it all for you. Changing objects is also a case of just prompting for that change. So here I'm saying change the woman on the right to be a bearded hipster dude from Los Angeles. And that is the input image I'm using. And in just 10 steps, so that's 30 seconds, we've got our bearded hipster dude. Sometimes thinking of what you want to change can be quite tricky. So just try all sorts of things. This time I'm saying change the rodents to an origami style folded paper. There's the rodent in this case. He's watching the telly. And then in 14 steps, he's changed into that paper origami version. Love it. Or of course, the obvious thing to do with that image would be to change the rodent to a fish-like alien humanoid with arms and legs. 14 steps again. And well, I think it's done quite well. It's sort of fish-like. Definitely alien. If you looked at the E1 code and Gradio demo, you'll see they have a prompt refiner too, which this LLM group emulates. They have a big system prompt, which I've modified to output just the two lines required, meaning it gives results like in the show text box here. So it's got editing instruction, change the tiger's fur to a vibrant blue, target image description, a tiger head portrait with blue fur, featuring piercing orange eyes and a slight smile. Here I've just connected the LLM prompt in there. So that's the new way of connecting things. You no longer have to right click and change widget to that. You can just connect things now, which is quite nice. And there is the input image. I've also been testing rescale CFG, which sort of seems to work. So this time I've got the CFG up at 3.5, UniPC and a different scheduler, because why not SGM uniform? But as you can see, it has indeed turned the tiger's fur blue. Those smaller GGUF files also work in much the same way, but you will need the custom GGUF UNet loader node in order to load them in. This particular example here, I'm using the Q6, which should work nicely with 16 gig of VRAM. Being a GGUF, it is of course much slower. So for these tests, it was more like 45 seconds for the 12 steps. I hope you had fun learning all the different things you can do with this new model, along with the various settings you can change. If you're looking to support the channel or you'd like to get those pre-made versions of the things shown, then do check out my Patreon. It's you who makes the channel possible. So a massive thanks to each one of you. Ooh, nerdy rodent. He really makes my day. Showing us AI in a really British way.